This is John Kirby. Good job. Bring it here. This is Bear. Oh. And this is John's arthritic knee acting up. Every once in a while, it'll, it'll just lock up on me and it'll almost drop me to my knees. John's an active 60-something in good health, except for his unfortunate knees. A high school football injury, years of distance running, and a family history of arthritis eventually caught up with those knees. There's pain involved, but worse, John's had to give up some of the things he loves. I used to do an awful lot of, of backpacking and hiking, and um, I, I'm just not able to do that anymore, and I miss it. I, I, I love getting out into the mountains and in the woods and, you know, the peace. Come on, let's go inside. Let's get something to eat. Cross-country skiing is out, too, and John's bicycle sits unused in the midst of biker paradise. Maybe worst of all, he hasn't been able to go dancing with his fiance. I love this song. Sometimes when we are attempting to dance to this Cajun or the Zydeco music, there's a lot of pivoting and swiveling, and you can sometimes hear the, the, the knee crunching. It's, you know, basically bone on bone. John tried anti-inflammatory medications, activity modifications, and joint injections. When those failed to provide long-term relief from pain, John and his doctor agreed that knee replacement surgery was worth considering. Living with the pain and lack of mobility just wasn't an option for John. Mr. Kirby? Hi, oh, hi, come on back yeah. with me. Sure. The most common thing that really causes me a lot of pain is when it will lock up on me. And what that is is just a, a, a sharp pain that just makes me almost gasp. And then uh, there's a residual kind of a throbbing for, you know, the, the duration varies, but uh, anywhere from several minutes to even several hours. Right there. This looks familiar. Doesn't it? Eight months ago, John had his first knee replacement surgery at the University of Washington Medical Center. He researched his options and chose his surgeon carefully, finding someone who combined a high level of surgical skill with a high regard for his patient's emotional well-being. John says that Dr. Seth Leopold went to great lengths to answer all his questions and prepare him for the procedure. Once I learned what was involved in the procedure, that was, quite honestly, a little scary to me. And there is always some risk involved with surgery, especially with anesthesia. And, um, you know, just, you know, the thought that, oh, gosh, they're going to be cutting my whole knee out and putting these metal pins. And, uh, you know, it just sounded like, ooh. So it, it was, it was, it was scary, it was unsettling, and even though um, I felt pretty confident with Dr. Leopold because of the way we interacted, the information he gave me, the reassurances he gave me. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's something you have to experience to, to really um, develop the confidence in. Hey, Dr. Hey, Leopold. Mr. Kirby. Good to see you. You too, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this knee. Now John's preparing to have his second knee replaced. And this time, the confidence is already there. All right, so this is the one we did last year? Yep. This one's working fine? It works great. Terrific. That's super. And get it fully straight. Go ahead and bend it up. Oh, you did super. A great motion. Is this the good knee now? Mm -hmm. All right, we'll see if we can get you another good one. When Dr. Leopold operated on John's right knee, he used a technique with a 30-year record of success. Now, as John prepares for surgery on his left knee, they've decided on a newer and somewhat different approach. The way it was explained to me is that the incision, they have to first cut the quadriceps muscle, and then they go down from the knee, and it's all seven or eight inches long. And uh, the new procedure, the less invasive one, is they're going to be going in on the, more on the side of the knee, and they won't have to cut the quadriceps. And so Dr. Leopold's experience has been is that the recovery and the rehab is relatively much shorter. It's called minimally invasive or quadriceps sparing knee replacement surgery. John is considered a good candidate for this procedure. 
in many ways, Mr. Kirby is an ideal candidate for the less invasive approach to the knee, the quadriceps sparing approach. He is slender. The alignment of his knee is close to what we call neutral, which is fairly straight. Uh, and so those two things taken together uh, make, it, make getting into somebody's knee a little bit easier. New surgical instruments developed for this procedure allow the quadriceps sparing surgery to be done safely and accurately with less trauma to the knee joint. Dr. Leopold began performing the surgery in Seattle shortly after those instruments became available. This is a model of a knee replacement using the same kind of components that we would put in whether we did a traditional approach or the minimally invasive approach. In this model you can see there's a thigh bone here and the shin bone here. This component here is on the end of the thigh bone and it's placed on after we machine or cut the end of the femur or thigh bone to the same shape that the component is and it's attached with bone cement. It's made out of cobalt chrome which is a type of steel and that's why it's pretty shiny. And this is exactly the same as the one that we would put in in the operating room, though of course that one would be sterile. This is the upper end of the shin bone, which we prepare also by squaring off with a nice flat cut. This grayish metal is titanium. In between the two metal components is a plastic bearing material. This is polyethylene resin, and it's very slippery and very durable. What isn't shown in this model is the kneecap, and that's so that you can see into the knee. Obviously, when we work on a, a regular person, we deal with the kneecap as well, and you'll see that at surgery. The important things to realize as you look at this model is how key it is to get the cuts just right. And it's one of the major skill moves during the operation that we have to uh, take care of. This cut wants to be perpendicular so that when the person walks on it, the weight is borne evenly over the bone. And at the end of the operation, very much like hanging a door, if you're building your house, you want the weight bearing line to be absolutely straight coming down through the middle part of the knee. And so getting this alignment just right is one of the important things that we do at surgery. The other important thing that we do at surgery is get the balance of the knee just right, to get the, the tension in the ligaments to be symmetric so that from one side to the other, it's about the same. This obviously is rubber bands, and people don't have rubber bands for ligaments, but getting that tension just right is important to allow people to get their range of motion back, but at the same time to have good stability when they walk. Here's another model of a knee. This knee doesn't have a knee replacement in it. And what I want to show you on this is some of the important differences between the newer, less invasive technique and the traditional approach. Here again you have the thigh bone and the top part of the shin bone, and here's the kneecap. With the traditional approach to knee replacement, it involves a pretty extensive exposure of the knee that initially begins with dividing the quadriceps tendon, or the tendon of the thigh muscle, lengthwise. After you divide that, you actually have to turn the kneecap out 180 degrees. And that gives you a good exposure, a very, a very good exposure of the knee. Um, but you can see it doesn't look particularly gentle on the tissues either. After you get that kind of exposure of the knee, using the traditional approach, not only do you evert or dislocate the kneecap, but you actually have to dislocate the knee for a portion of it to pull the thigh bone off of the shin bone in order to get a good view of the upper part of the shin bone to make sure the cuts are in the right alignment. Now with the newer, less invasive approach, it's not so traumatic to the tissues. With this approach, we don't actually divide the tendon of the thigh muscle at all. The incision is moved a little bit over to the side, and we come underneath it. And so we begin, rather than by flipping the kneecap out altogether, with the less invasive approach, we just tip it up, do the work that we need to do on the underside of the kneecap, and slide the kneecap out of the way. Then we're able to bend the knee, but we don't bend it as aggressively or as deeply as we have to with the traditional approach. We have special cutting guides that are smaller and smoother and allow us to make the cuts from the side so that we can do it with the knee positioned much more gently. And so this is really as much as the knee is ever bent in the course of the less invasive approach until the very end of the operation when we're testing to make sure that the person has full range of motion. I think that this combination of differences makes patients more comfortable after the operation. Ligaments are fine. Of course, John's also interested in the way his knee will look on the outside after the surgery. I'm just going to show you what to expect in terms of an incision. Here's your old incision from last year. It goes just about seven inches straight down the front of the knee. The newer way, what we're going to do is come in from the side. And usually we don't need uh, nearly so much of an incision. It's usually from the top of the kneecap just to the top of the shin bone and a little beyond that. So I would guesstimate in you maybe four, and the guy as tall as you four, inches or so, four, mm -hmm. four and a half inches. Mm -hmm. 
in a slightly different location so you won't be an exact match set because you had the one done the old way and you're going to get the other one done the less invasive way. So that's what to expect after in terms of the appearance of it. On the inside, x-rays show how damaged John's knee really is. This is a picture of a knee that's very nearly normal. This is a thigh bone, this is the shin bone, and between the thigh bone and the shin bone you can see a smooth black line that goes all the way across. It looks like space there, but really that smooth black line is joint surface cartilage. If you want to imagine what, or think of what that is, it's like the white shiny stuff on top of the chicken bone when you break that open. In a person of normal uh, height and weight, it should be about as thick as a barrel uh, of the pen. And so this is a knee that doesn't show much arthritis, if any. Over here you can see a very different appearance. This is our patient. And here again is the thigh bone. Here's the shin bone. There should be a smooth black line going all the way across. And you can see part of his knee shows a black line, and that's the bearing surface or joint surface cartilage. But for a large portion of the knee, in his case on the outside of the knee, that cartilage is worn completely through, and he's rubbing thigh bone against shin bone with no bearing pad between them to serve to cushion the load each time he takes a step. That causes the grinding and the pain and the catching that patients with arthritis often describe. The other things that you can see on this x-ray are bone spurs, these abnormal margins of heaped up bone that you see here that you don't see on the outside of the other x-ray. This is a side view of our patient's knee. And since we're coming from the side, you can see the kneecap out in front. So he's facing this way. Around the kneecap, these pointy bits of bone here are bone spurs. And the spurs themselves aren't painful, but they do reflect the abnormal loading that's going on around his knee because he's lost his joint surface cartilage. You also see some bone spurs around the back of the knee. So this man has got both severe and very diffuse arthritis affecting all of the surfaces in his joint. What you can see here is he did have last year uh, another knee replacement, and this shows a well-aligned knee replacement. This wants to be perpendicular. There's a good mantle of cement showing that it's well attached to the bone. This black line going across, just like in the normal knee, is the bearing surface, although now this bearing surface is polyethylene, which is a type of plastic rather than cartilage. And overall, the alignment of this uh, knee is just perfect the point of attachment to bone appears very solid, and so this would be a good-looking knee replacement. After either traditional or minimally invasive knee replacement, there is some pain and rehabilitation to go through. John's commitment to his physical therapy will be vital to getting the best result. That will include working to bend his knee even in the early post-operative period. You were saying this is a less invasive, but does that translate into it being perhaps a quicker rehab and recovery? process? Yeah, that's a, good, that's a good question. That's an important topic. And the idea of it is to get you back on your feet as quickly as possible. You know from your last experience that you get nice results with knee replacements mm -hmm. and you can regain a good deal or m most of the function that you had before you had arthritis with a good knee replacement. Mm -hmm. But I know you remember also that you have to invest quite a bit to get that result.